Hello everybody, welcome to Blue Marble Science. Today we're going to talk about pressurized gas in a container and why that's different from atmospheric pressure. Now I gotta tell you, if you didn't like the last one of these I did, you're really going to hate this one. Warning! Severe facial and monitor damage alert is in effect. Get out those oven mitts, push the monitors back out of punching range. And Gladys? Let's light this dumpster fire and have some fun. Flat Earth proponents want to believe their mentors and go along with a false equivalence fallacy that pressurized gas is somehow exactly the same as atmospheric pressure. Of course it isn't. It has some similarities, but the method in which you obtain the pressurization is completely different. Now they need this because they're trying to justify the flat earth with a dome over the top of it. Bear in mind that there's not one shred of evidence for a flat earth or a dome, yet they treat that as if it's reality. There's a phrase for that. That's called a reification fallacy. Sorry, boys. That's a fail. Let's talk about how we obtain pressurized gas and why that's different from atmospheric pressure. This is gas pressure in a sealed container by Indiana University. They use the balloon example. It's a good example. We all know how this works. You blow into the balloon, the balloon expands. The air you're blowing into the balloon is pressing on the inside of the balloon more than the air on the outside of the balloon is pressing on the outside of the balloon, so the balloon expands. The balloon resists that, and the impact of all the gas molecules inside the balloon against the inside walls of the balloon are what result in gas pressure. This only works in a proper sealed gas container. If it's not sealed, it's not a gas container. We all know what happens if we turn loose of the balloon. The gas that's inside the balloon will immediately want to escape. So how do we seal the balloon? Just tie a knot in it. That's right, that guy. You finally got something correct. Thank you. So in order to have pressurized gas in a sealed pressure vessel, like you see there, you need something like that thing you see on the right. You need an air compressor or some other way to generate pressure inside the container. What's different about that and atmospheric pressure? Well, again, according to Indiana University, Atmospheric pressure is now the pressure on the outside of the balloon. What does that depend on? Well, not an air compressor, that's for sure. In fact, what it depends on is nothing more than the acceleration of gravity. Atmospheric pressure is simply the weight of the air above any point. You know, we've gone through this and we've shown the derivation of the barometric equation. You've seen this before. All that is required is the acceleration of gravity. So to have one of those things pressurized, to have pressurized gas in a sealed container, you need something like that. To have atmospheric pressure, all you need is one of those things. Let's watch a little demonstration that I put together. Well, what have we here? It looks like we've got our old friend, the pipe, and the incline manometer. The incline manometer, if you recall, measures gas pressure by using a fluid of known specific gravity. And when we apply pressure to the top of that fluid on this end, it pushes the fluid up that incline tube and allows us to measure gas pressure. Pretty simple, very effective. Now there's a valve on the bottom of the pipe 
But that valve just stays in the open position. It really doesn't serve any purpose. There has been a change made, though. In order to be able to convert this to a true pressure vessel, a sealed container, I've installed a valve on top of the pipe. Now, if the valve is open as it is now, the pipe is incapable of sustaining pressurized gas, but if I close the valve like that, then we can maintain gas pressure in a sealed container. So let's add a little gas pressure simply by blowing in the end of the pipe. And when we get it about where we want it, we just shut the valve off. And that's what's happened right now. And there you have pressurized gas in a sealed container. The gas pressure the manometer is showing is about oh, 2.3 inches water column. Now what happens if we open the valve? Well, of course, we know what's going to happen. The pressure is going to go back to zero. In fact, just the momentum of the gas, uh, of the air, will drag the pressure reading down to slightly less than zero. That'll return, given just a, a few moments. The manometer is pretty sensitive down in that range. Now, just to be sure, we have no pressure. Let's take the pipe up about three or four feet and drop it back down. Actually, I can tell you exactly what that is. The workbench is uh, 38 inches. So, no pressure in the pipe whatsoever. Let's take the hose loose. And what we'll do now is add some butane pressure. So let's try to get the butane pressure about where we had the air pressure. Somewhere right about in there. And you can see with the valve closed now, we have, again, just about the same pressure uh, butane that we had air previously. So once again, let's open the valve and see what happens. Well, the butane pressure is completely ejected from the pipe. Or is it? Notice that the pipe is just slightly higher than the pressure port on the manometer. That'll result in a slight pressure reading. What happens if we raise the height of the column of butane? Let's take that height up 38 inches. Uh-oh. We've got gas pressure without a sealed container. We've got gas pressure in an open pipe. And you know what's causing that? You guessed it, gravity. The weight of the atmosphere pressing down on top of that butane that's in that pipe. Now, can we prove that's true? Well, I got an idea. Why don't we take the hose loose and get rid of the butane that's in the pipe? Watch the very top of the pipe. You'll actually see the butane come out as I blow in the end of the tubing. There you go. All the butane's gone. Hook the hose back up. No pressure. Well, we didn't have any pressure before. And again, no pressure. I think that pretty well settles it, fellas. Gas pressure in an open top pipe. That is not a gas container. There's nothing on the top for the gas to bounce off of, to press on. That was a graphic demonstration of gas pressure in a sealed container versus atmospheric pressure that doesn't require any sort of container. 
The Flat Earth Research Team of pseudoscientists you see here insisted all along that you could not have pressurized gas unless the container was sealed. That's exactly what QE said. That's what Nathan Oakley said. That's what Anthony Riley said. Now that they've been shown wrong, they're trying to move the goalpost around, and that's pretty normal for them. But they're so frustrated at this point, all they do now is hurl insults and call me names. Which I actually think is kind of funny. Tell you what, let's listen to some of their recent shenanigans. I think you'll get a kick out of it. For demonstration. <laughs> yeah. Honest to God. <laughs> no way. Put it on. We've got, we got to get this on screen capture. This is horrendous. Right. So you guys see my screen right now, yeah, right? Yeah. So somebody's put on this post, right? Membrane mm -hmm. not required for air pressure, right? Unfortunately, many flat earthers, blah, blah, blah. And he basically begs the question with the gradients, right? Danny Faulkner, thanks for saying this again, but it won't do any good because some people aren't listening. I've just literally responded a minute ago. I am listening. I'm saying that you've done no evidence this is possible. And I'm scrolling down the list and I've just found this fucking idiot here. There, Danny Faulkner. So Ivan says, membrane not required. Oh, wonderful. Please cite one experiment proving you can have pressurized gas next to an atmosphere without a container. Can't wait to see it. Danny Faulkner, they're citing gas pressure without a container. <laughs> 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 yeah, just because it's small, hold on. Just because it's small, away. can you click on it just so we can actually see where that video takes you? Just because it's quite small on my pit. It's going to take us to Blue Marble Science. Scroll down, scroll down, just so you can see the title and the video. There Blue we go. Science, Unbelievable. Pressure. So let me get this straight. A PhD astronomer, when asked how you can have gas pressure without a container, One on the internet. cited the redneck retard hillbilly blue balls demonstration of transferring gas pressure from a sealed container to gas pressure in a leaky container. Well, that's all they've got, name calling. That's what this whole thing has come down to. I do think the nervous... Uh, fake laughter was kind of funny. And then, just not to be outdone, Sleeping Warrior goes and does this. This was on his channel yesterday. In his community section, he put this post. Favor request. Blue Marble Science is asking for suggestions for a future video. Here is my suggestion. Please go over to his channel, find his community post, and ask him for a video of gas pressure but without a container. Go get him, guys. Really, Anthony? And that's what he posted right there. Down at the end of it, he says, uh, if you have to accept that you cannot do it or explain it either, let me know what drink you want. The first one is on me, Riley's Flat Earth Bar for Real Scientists. You mean that place, Anthony? Uh, no thanks. I think I'll pass. Honestly, guys, Flat Earth is getting pretty desperate at this point. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. There's a link to the Patreon. Contributions are gratefully accepted. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Hey, Gladys. We're out of here.